y'all. It's Diana again in broad daylight. How are y'all doing today? I hope everybody's doing okay. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about the meltdown that I had yesterday. Well, I got word that my ex-husband had his first son recently, and they named him Muhammad. And I don't know why it really upset me so bad. I think it was that gender dysphoria hit me in the face, just bam, bam, bam. It was like saying, you know, if you'd been natural born, you could have had him children, you this and you that. But hey, I lived with the man for 18 years. I know <laughs> he will not make a good father. That mother will raise that child, maybe with help of fa other family members, but not with him. And I was really lucky not to have been able to have children with him because I would not want to be saddled with something like that. But it hit me in the face because that was the reason we divorced because he had taken another wife but of course, that wife, the one that we divorced over, left him. I don't know if they divorced or not, but then he took a third wife. So the woman that had this baby was his third wife. And I doubt he divorced the other one because he didn't want to divorce me. He didn't mind because in, in the Muslim culture, you can have up to four wives. I was wife number one, so I guess I was lucky. <laughs> Not. Well, it shows you that that second one wouldn't, didn't even put him up with him for a year. And I put up with his sorry ass for 18. So <laughs> they've not paid their dues yet. Even the one that's had a baby has not paid her dues. Not yet. But the one he married is a Bedouin woman. I don't know if you're familiar with the Bedouin culture. That's the people that you see in the movies that live in the tents, that ride camels, that raise goats and sheep. That's what he's married into. Yeah, so anything he could provide for her above a tent <laughs> would be a good thing. <laughs> and I was expecting so much more. <laughs> so yesterday I was in a real funk over that. And it wasn't for the, for the, the, the missing him and the love of, for him, you know, even though I did love him after so many years, you would love a dog that you had for that many years. <laughs> And that's basically how it was. But it was that gender dysphoria to think I couldn't have children and this woman had him children. Well, had him the one child. The, uh, she did miscarry the first one. And, and I felt bad because when I found out about the uh, miscarriage, it made me happy. And that was an evil thing. To and, and I know that, and, and I felt bad for that. And after I calmed down about this one, I realized, you know, that this child came into the world. He has no control over the situation that he comes into. So, he's a gift. So, I, I, I'm glad, you know, if he wanted children, that that's what he has. But whenever we were courting and getting to know each other, he had promised me that he didn't want children, he didn't like children, and that he definitely did not want to marry an Arab woman because he had lived for 18 years in Germany. And had actually not been back home, so he had not been into the Middle East. At the time that I married him, we went to Jordan together. He hadn't been there years, so he was very westernized. So, um, I took him at what he said, that he did not want children, 
and he would never marry again. And I've even got videos where he professes that he loves me and would want you to be married to me the rest of his life. But things changed with him after his father passed away from complications of a car wreck. And his mother started putting this guilt trip on him and it just changed, mixed him up, changed his whole attitude. He was torn between her and our life and she won. So um, that's where I am with that. You know, I wouldn't know any of this, but I had become very close to uh, one of his aunts, his mother's sister, much younger sister. And she has kind of kept up with me. She's tried to get me to come to Palestine where she lives. She never married. And she would like us just to be old maids together the rest of our lives. And she lives in her great, their great grandfather's house, a nice two-story Middle Eastern house in uh, Palestine that's over 150 years old. It has so much history and I've seen pictures and videos taken there and, it, and I would love to live there, but I don't want to be that close to the connection with my ex-husband, but she and I are friends. So that's the reason she told me about this, but she really wasn't wanting to upset me and I did not let her know that it upset me. But after that conversation, it did. But by the end of the night, after I thought about it and prayed about it, and I never did cry or anything, but I had that feeling that it was deep down and I knew that it was wrong and I had to let that go. And I did. And by the end of the evening, I was fine. And today, I'm fine. I'm fine with it. I'm actually feeling pride that he has what he wants. You know, I just wish that I had known that at the beginning of our relationship, that that's what he would want later on. So I could have made my decisions accordingly, knowledgeable with what might would happen. But um, I'm having a great day today. I'm back out here in the country. I don't have the baby today, so I'm missing her. I love her. Her name is Elena. She's so sweet. So today, I've just been domesticating around, <laughs> doing some cooking and things, and trying to enjoy the springtime, because before you know it, here in Mississippi, it's going to be so hot you can't even go outside, because you can't breathe because of the humidity. So I'm having a great day today. So I won't keep y'all any longer. Hope everybody's having a great day and uh, you continue to have a great evening.